Good afternoon, everyone. I want to talk today. Topic today is staying at the beat in a beat up world. What do we do? You know, we're living in times of anxiety and stress. I got a lot of texts this week and emails from people who are so anxious. One guy texts me, he says, Rabbi, I can't even work. I can't even talk to you. I'm so anxious. So I want to share some tools and methods, how to deal, how to stay positive, how to deal with the stress, the anxiety, the pain, the worry. What do we as Jews do? What is our answer? How do we cope with this in our world? So we'll start off with a little joke. You know, there's a story about this monastery in Asia. And tourists used to go visit this monastery with all the Buddhists and the monks. And the only way up was, was on top of a high mountain, a high cliff. And the only way up was a couple of monks would pull you up in this big bucket. So this is how you got up and down, up and down. And one day this tourist is heading up there. And um, he notices the rope with a couple of monks pulling him up is very, very shaky. So he's like, he tells the monk next to him, tell me, you know, in a trembling voice, he says, tell me, how often do you change this rope? And the monk thinks for a minute and he says, you know what, whenever it breaks. So what do we do with this nervousness? How do we cope? So as usual, whenever we have any troubles, any worry, any pain, the way to deal with it is to look at the Torah. The Torah is our guiding light. The Torah is our inspiration. The Torah is what we're supposed to live with. The Alter Rebbe said, live with the times. Live with the times means look at the parashiyot, look at the Torah, see what we're living with that week. So let's take a look at a person we read about just two weeks ago, a guy by the name of Noah. Noah lived in the first or second century, in, um, in the year 1648 approximately was the flood. So Noah was about 500 years old when the flood happened. Think about this for a moment. The flood came and destroyed everything in the entire world. Noah, who used to have friends, who used to have a world, his entire world was decimated and destroyed. In fact, when he came out of the flood, out of the ark, the only people alive, the only people he knew now were his wife and, and, and children. That's it. All his friends he grew up with, he went to school with, he, he lived with, he danced with, he kibitzed with, he had fun with. Everybody was gone. Can you imagine how painful that must have been for Noah to see the entire world not only gone crazy, but destroyed and doesn't exist anymore? How would Noah find? stamina, the strength to continue. What do we learn? What does the Bible tell us? Noah lived 350 years after the flood. What he did was he decided that he has to take action. He decided, yes, the world has ceased to exist, but God gave me a command. The command was pro urvu, to flood the world with children, to procreate. So Noah went and he brought goodness and kindness into the world and he repopulated the world. He didn't give up. He wasn't depressed and said, oh, what am I supposed to do? I can't do anything about it. Noah decided to make a difference. And he continued living his life 350 more years and he saved civilization. You know, they tell the story of there was once Reb Meir Premichlan. Reb Meir lived in the town of Premichlan. He lived on top of a hill. Every morning he used to walk down the hill to go to the mikveh to immerse himself before he used to pray. So in the summer it was no problem, but in the winter it was snowy, the whole mountain was snowy, and he went down the mountain, down the mountain, down the mountain, and he never ever faltered, he never fell. So one day there were two skeptics who wanted to see this miracle, they claimed it was nonsense. And they watched her mayor walk down the snow, he didn't slip once, go down and back up. So they decided, oh, it's probably not real snow. So they took a few steps down the snow themselves to dry it out. And after just three or four steps, they fell and slipped and broke their bones. And the next day they came to Reb Mayer and they said, tell us, Reb Mayer, how is it that you don't fall? And he answered them, when one is connected above, one does not falter below. This is our guiding light. As Jews, we are connected above. We have a God and we know that God runs the world. We know that God is in control. We know that God is the boss. So when we are connected to our Torah, to our God, we don't falter below. We have nothing to be anxious about, nothing to be worried about. When we 
put our trust and our faith in God, what's it to worry about? Abraham, which we read this week, was also living in a world that had gone crazy. Abraham was called Abraham Ha'ivri. Ivri means the other side. When the whole world believed in idols, when the whole world believed not in one God, they didn't know it, they were serving and worshiping idols and idols and idols. Abraham was one person who stood up to the entire world and said, the world is crazy. In fact, Medrash tells us that one day Abraham goes out and he sees like the world in, in, in flames. He says, this is crazy. What's going on with the world? And he has a voice coming out and it's God. And God says, I am the boss of this world. And sometimes we look around us and we think the world is crazy. The world doesn't have a master. And God tells us, I am the boss. I am in control. You may think that I'm on a vacation somewhere or something, but I am in control. Let's take a look at Rabbi Akiva for a minute. Rabbi Akiva was 40 years old. When he started learning the Torah, he was illiterate. He didn't know the difference between Aleph and Abet. Rabbi Akiva, at the age of 20, at the age of 40 years old, decided to go and study Torah at the encouragement of his wife, Rachel. For 24 years, he studied day and night. He put all his toil and effort. And after 24 years, he had amassed 24,000 students, prize students who loved him. 24,000 students. And after a while, for whatever reason, there wasn't enough love between them. God brought the plague that destroyed and decimated all these students. Rabbi Akiva, his life's work had gone down the drains. His students who he loved with all his heart and soul had perished, had died. You would think that Rabbi Akiva would be despondent and despaired and discouraged. You would think that Rabbi Akiva would be depressed. Every day he would wake up and say, oh my God, OMG, what should I do today? My world is destroyed. And yet the Torah tells us that Rabbi Akiva did not give up hope, not even for one minute. He went to the north and he gathered together five brand new students and he taught them the entire Torah that he had taught. That he had known everything and that is how the Torah survived. Because through those five students that Rabbi Akiva decided to teach, the Torah survived them to the next generations. Can you imagine if Rabbi Akiva would have despaired and given up? There would be no Torah today. Because Rabbi Akiva teaches us that we do not give up. When one is connected above, when one has faith, one does not falter below. As Jews, we know that we never, ever walk alone. God is always there protecting us. Whatever we do, wherever we are, in whatever situation we are, and therefore we have nothing to be anxious about. We see things from a very limited vision. We look at this world and we think, oh, Taurus and problems, and we are so anxious and nervous. But put yourself in God's hands. Allow yourself to trust in God fully and utterly. And you will realize that you have no problems. There are no issues. God is in control. God loves us. God has a plan. God knows what he's doing. So what were you worried about today? And let's just look at one last individual, Amram. Amram was one of the four people who never sinned in his life, Moses' father. Amram lived in a dark, turbulent world where Pharaoh inflicted pain upon the Jews. They enslaved the population. And at one point, Amram kind of gave up. When Pharaoh made the decree to throw all males into the river, Pharaoh separated from i mean amram separated from his wife and since he was the leader of the generation all the jews in that generation also separated from their spouses he gave up he says why am i bringing children into the world if they're going to die such a dark turbulent world the forces of evil are so powerful they are dominant they give up and his six-year-old daughter miriam came to her father and said Daddy, your decree is worse than Pharaoh. You are worse than Pharaoh because Pharaoh only decreed that the males should be killed, not the females. And Pharaoh only decreed that they should die in this world, but the Nishamas' souls live on forever. And you, not only you killing the males, you're killing the females also, not in this world, but in the world to come as well. And Miriam inspired her father. Her father got remarried. 
to his wife, Yocheved. Every Jew got remarried to their wives as well. And Amram gave birth to a son called, Yocheved gave birth to a son called Moses, who saved the world. All it took was one flicker of hope from a young girl, six-year-old girl called Miriam, to inspire her father to give birth to Moses. As Jews, we know, we never walk alone. We need to meditate upon this concept daily. Close your eyes and think deeply how much God loves us. Think deeply how much God cares for us. And automatically, our worries, our anxiety, our pain ceases to eat. May we all implement this in our lives. May we all realize how much God loves us. And may we know, know, have no more worries, anxiety, and pain to deal with anymore. Have a wonderful Shabbat, wonderful week.